We love you and praise you. Lord, we know this message is so important, so important to hear. So, Father, open the eyes and ears, our spiritual eyes and ears, Father. Allow us to hear your voice. Allow us to sit at the feet uh, in the throne room of glory, Father. And just allow us to have an understanding that you've already done this. You've prepared the way. And now we have to, in obedience, live by it. So, Father, we thank you, love you, and praise you. Again, Father, we lift this time to you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. So in Romans 10, 14, it says this. And I love this because this is a great, great verse. How can people invoke his name when they do not believe? How can people invoke the name of the Lord when they don't believe? Let me tell you something. It's really, it's really simple. I know a hundred people or more that say they believe or they know of, but they don't know him. And this is the problem today. Many people think because they know of him, then it's all set. But unless I know him and I believe in him, then how can I say anything about him? How can they believe in him when they have not heard? You know, it's, it's kind of interesting because for me, whenever I, I speak to somebody, I want to speak the words of God. I want to speak kingdom language. Because let me put it this way. And I said this to Patrick yesterday in the kitchen. Nobody knows the clockworks of time but God. And he's the one that goes and unplugs the clock. Some of you going, well, Pastor Mark, that's, that's pretty brutal. But that's the truth. That's the truth. And so whenever I'm around anybody, I always want to say, do you know him? Do you know him? Well, who? who? Do you know Jesus? Well, I know of Jesus. I know that's not that. Do you know him? See? It, it, it's kind of interesting because many of you know, after 61 years, I found my birth family. And it's kind of interesting because my sister went to church for the first time in many, many years last night. And, and you know, he, here's the thing. Everybody told her when we met, oh, your brother's a pastor. And you know, he's going to, you can't, you can't be who you are. And most of you know, I love being who I am. A uh, little bit off the wall sometimes, a little bit crazy, a little bit. See, that's, that's my brother back there saying just a little bit. See, just a little bit. But God's made all of us for a purpose. Every single one of us. I, the only thing he wants to change in you is this. Because when this changes, this out here changes. So how can they hear if there's no one proclaiming him? All right. So, again, met Don. Messaged her a lot. And then he said, by the way, Watch me Wednesday night. So because I do this thing called the fix. And uh, so she watched. And afterwards, when I was done, and I said, "I'm your brother first, but I'm a pa I said, "I'm your I'm a brother second. I said, "But I'm a pastor first, and that's who I am. And this is you can choose to either like me or not like me. Period. End of conversation. And she goes. Well, I found it very intriguing. <laughs> and, 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 you know, she said, I really liked what you had to say. Because, again, I, it's being a Christian doesn't mean there's a law. It means that there is commandments and there is grace and there is mercy and there is unconditional love. But God says this. If you want to live, lose your life and walk in obedience to me. That's really it. Because what? The wages of sin is death. 
That's how it works. That's how it works. So it's, it's really kind of interesting because, you know, all of a sudden, I can't see that far with the glasses on. How can, <laughs> how can they hear if no one's proclaiming them? How can some give voice to the truth if they're not sent by God? There's a lot of BS artists out there. Bad stuff artists. All right? Because I know some of you are going, he just said that word. I never said the word. I said a B and an S and bad stuff. See, that's part of who I am. As Isaiah said, ah, how beautiful the feet of those who declare the good news of victory, of peace and liber liberation. That's also why the, strip, bleh, the scripture says, how welcome is the arrival of those proclaiming the joyful news of peace and of good things to come. So we've spoken about the river. All right. There's streams. Each one of us a stream. The stream forms a river. All right. And, and the Lord speaks about the river. Now that flow comes through human vessels. So everything that flows out of the church or out of the temple flows through human vessels. You know, people say, well, if God's God, why can't he just do what he has to do? Well, first of all, he doesn't want to because he's God. You know what he wants to do? Use you and me. He wants to use you and me. Because you know what? You and I have a bigger impact on humanity than we think we do. It's kind of interesting because this little church in Standish, Maine, has a huge impact acro across the world. Across the world. We hear from people all over the world. And, and you know what's funny? Is there are pastors that watch us, that watch these messages. And some of them don't like what we're saying, and some of them are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it, he's saying it. Because, well, I've never been one to not say what God wants me to say. And so all of a sudden, we, we, in those streams that form a river, all of a sudden come forward flowing the life of Christ. I love it because there's this, there's this lady named Joyce who's out in the street. Well, she's not on the street, but she's out there. She's kind of called to take care of people on the streets. And, 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 and Patrick has somehow found this woman. And this woman now leads Patrick to all these different places. And it's funny because the, Joyce says to, to these people, this is Patrick, he's come to tell you about Jesus. This is Patrick, he's come to tell you about Jesus. So there's, there's a stream flowing from the temple, proclaiming exactly what that saying is, that, that it can't be done. But see, Patrick believes. And so in his belief, he's flowing. He, he wants people to know. See? I have a rare opportunity this weekend to go to Connecticut and meet my birth mother. I got a flow. See, I got a flow. Because if if I don't, who will? See, because that's that's the task we're given is to go. Go and flow. See. Now that flow comes through human vessels, the people of the church. The people bear the vessel of the Holy Spirit. That is indwelling, again, through the act of repenting and receiving and believing. Next comes the act of the action of belief. Oh, Pastor Mark, I believe, but I don't know. But yes, you do know. Because fear is not from the Lord. And the word of God, if you know it, says, I will give you everything you need and I will fill your mouth. Think about the... The people, that the disciples that went out and Jesus said this. He said, if they receive you, stay. 
if they don't wipe the dust off your feet and go to the next place. And don't take anything with you. Don't take anything with you. Because I'll give you everything you need. Again, yesterday proved that. The Lord will give us everything we need if we just stop live in the divine stillness within the divine nature of God and just trust in Him for everything. For everything. See? <clears throat> so next comes the act of the action of belief which comes through communication. Through communication. Oh, you might have to talk. And I know some of you love to talk. Sometimes I wish you'd stop talking. But I know you love to talk. But when we have the belief and, and, and we understand and we know his nature and now we put it into action and we start communicating, what happens? The river begins to flow river begins to flow. I have always loved the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel speaks in such crazy terms, but in these terms it speaks volume to the believer in the church. Ezekiel 41.7 says, a 47.1 says this, the man whose appearance was like bronze led me back to the temple entryway. Bronze, by the way, stands for humanity, just so you understand that. All right, Human existence led me back to the temple's entryway. There I observed a stream of water bubbling up from beneath the temple threshold. Hold that thought for a minute. Flowing eastward in the same direction the temple faced, the water was running parallel to the temple's wall south of the altar. <clears throat> Remember, bronze stands for the justified human nature of Christ. It stands for the justified human nature of Christ. Well, how do you know that, Pastor Mark? Because I looked it up. Because I studied God's word. I find something, I said, Lord, that looks like it needs to be studied. And he goes, yes, it does. Yes, it does. So that's the justified. Who's the justified human? Oh, through salvation, I'm justified. I'm made righteous. Jesus Christ is justified and made righteous. So here he is. Somebody said to me once, well, Jesus was never in Ezekiel. Yes, he is. He's right there. It is also where God's nature deals with sin. So what we're seeing is Ezekiel being led to the door of the temple or the church where the corporate body is, the corporate body is. All right. Paul stated it wonderfully in Ephesians 2 when Paul states, do you remember who you were? Do you remember who you were? You just used to exist. Let's be honest now. When we were without Christ, we just existed. And we lived every day for us. It wasn't about anybody else. It was all about me. All about me. Nothing else mattered as long as I got what I wanted. What a bunch of spoiled, rotten kids we were. See? And so, do you remember who you were? You used to just exist. And then he goes on to say, that Christ broke everything that was between us and God. That being the law, by the way. He came in, and all that was broken, and all of it was taken care of, and Jesus came, and he became the provision for the law. Because a lot of people love to preach law. They don't know what grace is. They don't know what mercy is. They don't know what those things are. If the law was still in place, we'd have a hundred birds flying around. We'd be plucking them out of the sky and sacrificing them. We'd have a whole barnyard out front. We'd be sacrificing all sorts of stuff. Doesn't happen anymore. Doesn't happen anymore. 
it, this is what happens. Father, forgive me, head in the rear end. Can't help it. Got to. For some of my guests, you'll understand. Usually I make the noise of the head being pulled out, you know, and that's it. But honestly, Father, forgive me. <sighs> Stupid me. It's out of my head. I'm coming to you. And what does he do? Mercy and grace reply. See? Does that give us a right to sin? No, it does not. Hopefully, grace would be the greatest teacher you have ever understood because grace teaches us not how to do that same thing over and over and over again. That's the cool thing about grace. So when Christ did that, bringing an end to the... He brought an end to the altar of Christ of the laws, ordinance, and dictations that separated the Jews from the outside nations. So, so now we became one big family. Many of you know my Jewish story. I wanted to be Jewish, so I took all the th classes and did all of that for our guests. And, well, you know, I found out I was too old and I wasn't making any bank. So that was the end of my Jewish run. I only did it because I thought I was going to get a bar mitzvah. I lived in an all-Jewish neighborhood. We were the only Gentiles, and I wanted money. No. And I've repented of that. And it's really kind of funny because the, the rabbi who began to do the whole thing, he since passed away, became a very good friend of mine. I led him to the Lord, Rabbi Sky, and I led him to the Lord, got him saved. And you know what? Awesome. So there was, see, God's plan is perfect. Let's get the... Let's get the greedy Gentile to do this. <laughs> to get to be a Jew, and then you know he can save the rabbi later on. <sighs> Creating one no humanity from the two opposing groups. See? The sacrificial offering was the assignment that we were given. That's what it was. <laughs> I know whose phone that is. Shelly, from now on, you're going to have to give me your phone before you come into the chapel. <laughs> Just like all those kids on the bus. Don't bring your radios with you on trips. Huh? The sacrificial offering was the assignment that we were given. The sacrificial offering. Christ came in all humility. Christ came in all humility. That's one of the sacrificial offerings. Is we have to come in all humility. If we can't come in humility, we'll never have anything to pour out. We'll never have anything to pour out. Sure, we can stand there and we can put on our Jesus suit and we can act, you know, but you know what? Boom. The words just trickle and drop. Instead of going, whew. See? And I, and I love this statement, and I heard it the other day from a gentleman and it's are you on the list so now a lot of times I'll walk up to people and say are you on the list what list well you know the list that's coming up the list that all of a sudden is going to be opened when your days here end and you are now standing in the presence of God Well, I believe in God. That's not what I asked you. Is your name on the list? So we have to come under humility. Christ is under God, and we are under Christ. Christ in humility became under God's will. Did you hear that? Christ in humility came under, became under God's will. Oh, Pastor Mark, I'm a good Christian. I'm here on Sundays. I'm forming a butt mold in the chair. I'm here. I'm good. No, you're not good. None of us are good. We're righteous only when we receive Christ. 
But the heart is wicked and the mind is deceitful. Even in Christians, it's called a sin nature. But Paul also said, I'm no longer a slave to sin. So we choose, again, I, I love this. Everything is up to us. We choose to live in the humility of Christ under God. And in that humility, under God, under Christ, if we choose to, then we can flow out of the temple. Now, if there's a massive flow of humility outside the temple, what happens? The river goes out and what? Feeds the land. Waters the land. So as we continue in Ezekiel 47, 1, we see the statement bubbling underneath the door. Bubbling underneath the door. This is the life of Christ seated at the right hand of God, the Heavenly Father. This is, this is God seated at the right, this is Jesus seated at the right hand of God. All right. The heavenly place. This life flows to us on the right side. The right side. Why the right side? Because that's the side where Jesus sits next to God. So the right side is where this all flows down and then flows under the door of the temple and bubbles up in. You heard the song, it's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling in my soul, it's singing, it's shouting since Jesus made me whole. Folks can't understand it. What's the rest of it? Oh, great. <laughs> Neither can I keep it quiet. It's bubbling, 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 bubbling day and night. Sunday school song. I've been out of Sunday school for a long time. But that's what it is. See? So the, t the temple door, ooh, temple door, begins to receive that bubbling. And in that bubbling, it begins to go... And all of a sudden, as we fill, as we fill in humility, knowing that it's nothing to do with us. That's one of the big problems in Christianity today. How wonderful and great I am. Let me tell you what, everything that I did yesterday was not by my strength, but by the strength of the Lord, because I was dragging Nobody knew this, but I've had vertigo all weekend long. My ears have been plugged. My wife goes, what are you going to do? I said, I'm gonna, it's going to be just like a trip back in my old days. Not now, not now. And so, you know, if I spun real fast, the room kept going. But if I spun slowly, it was like, So it was totally by that. Why? Because it was bubbling. It was bubbling. Be That's why the meatballs were so big. I make meatballs the side of a, a, a pro baseball ball because I got big hands. So it's like if I could make a meatball the size of a softball, I would. Two meatballs filled with, yeah, it did. So it bubbles. So again, living in the stillness, this flow flows to us on the right side. Why? Because we've been made right with God. And we live in the stillness of what has been done, not in, not in our strength, but in Christ's humility. See? Well, nothing I do, if I do it for me, glorifies God. As a matter of fact, you don't even get a blessing from it. You'll get the momentary blessing of the second, but you won't get the long-term blessing in eternity. That's why we must do it in do everything in humility, do everything unto the Lord. Because you know what? This isn't your home. If you want blessings here, that's fine. There are people that get blessings here, but then they don't get them there. 
It's because they're not glorifying God here. They're glorifying self. Now, do some of us do good jobs? Yep. Do some of us love this? Yep. I'm I'm one of those people I hate applause. Because I know who I used to be, and I know who I am now, and I know that without Christ, I wouldn't be standing here doing what I'm doing. I'd be trying to find another way to make money, and I can't do it by being Jewish because I'm way too old now. So in this stillness, we need to understand a couple of things. One, we need to stay humble. Stay humble. It's funny that one day we can be doing amazing things for Christ, but then again we can insert our heads in our butts and be filled with pride. Period. You know what happens? We get a little taste of that, oh, they like what I did. And our heads go, and we become a bobblehead. Wow, the room just spun real well on that one. See, this is what happens. See? And then all of a sudden, that moment we had for God, now it's, oh, it's gone. You see, the sin nature wells up. Pride wells up. See? Instead, it should be, oh, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to do what you have called me to do and giving me everything I need to do what you've called me. It's like I, I can do everything I have to do, but God gets the glory for all of it. It's not mine. See, it's not mine. It's not mine to have. See, it's God's. And, and if I allow the stillness to be what God has given me, divine stillness, if I live in that divine stillness, and I allow that Holy Spirit to bubble up under the door, that river, that water of life to bubble up under the door, and it begins to fill me. And I know it's nothing that I did, but it's everything that Christ has done for me, and now he wants to give me everything I need, and now I'm filling, and I got to go, ah, and I got to speak. Because, again, there has to be that constant flow, just that constant flow. Well, Pastor Mark, that's impossible. There are things going on in the world. Yes, there are, but they're not yours. They're not yours. When have you ever been able to change anything in this world? There's only one thing that can change things. One thing that can change God's mind is when his people humble themselves and come fall upon their knees and they repent of their sins. Then the Bible says, he says, I will heal their land. I think I've said this in every single service I have preached in the last year and a half since COVID came. Okay, I, honestly. Because that's what it takes. And there it is. If my people, and I hope you are his people, humble themselves. So stay humble. It's funny that one day we can be doing amazing things for Christ, but then it's in our heads and be filled with pride where we even to save our lives cannot get it together without realizing we need to be under him. Because many times we'll enter into pride and we'll, ah, and then all, we're, the, the, you still see the walls crumbling around you. And we still stay in pride instead of saying, oh, Lord, forgive me for entering into that place. We need to be under him, living in the directive will of God. A great reference is 1 Peter 5, 5 through 7. Let's go there if we can. You who are younger in the faith, do as your elders and leaders ask. All of you should treat each other with humility, for as it says in Proverbs, God opposes the proud but offers grace to the humble. So, ready for this? 
bow down under God's strong hand. Then when the time comes, ready? God will lift you up. Now somebody's saying, well, that means he's going he's gonna to shower me with. No, he's not going to shower you with anything. He's going to lift you up. And what? He's going to glorify himself through you. Remember, he needs us. He needs us. God will lift you up since God cares for you. Let him carry. Oh, oh, this is a tough one for all of us. Let him carry all your burdens and worries. Oh, Pastor Mark, that means I, I, I don't have to. No, no, I, I sleep wonderfully at night. I don't know about the rest of you. I just kind of go, chit, chit. that's a punch clock, by the way. I punch out. I said, God, it's your shift. <laughs> And, and you know what? Because <laughs> I love this. An another, another Sunday school song. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Your hands aren't the size of God's hands. Look at your hands. First of all, hold your hands up to your face like this. Do that. All right. Now, let me ask you something. Any nail holes in your hands? Then you can't save anything. You can't change anything. Worrying and taking it on as a burden is never going to change. You know, somebody already did that. His name's Jesus Christ. He already did it. Now you get to pray to God and say, Lord, you know, the direction of this whole thing worries me just a tad. But I know your plan is perfect, your provision is perfect, and your purpose is perfect. And so I'm just going to enter in divine stillness and allow you to pour yourself through the temple so that I can be filled up and I can be one of those flowing rivers. Because i got to ask you something. How can you be a flowing witness bringing glory to God if your head's all screwed on sideways and you're worried about everything else? The, the enemy has done exactly what he wanted to do, and that is distract you and deceive you and bring in deception that your worry is going to change the world. How's that working for you? See? So I, you know, I said, Lord, <laughs> you, you hold it. It's yours. Can I pray? Oh, absolutely. Matter of fact, the word of God says pray without ceasing. What's prayer? Communication with God. So as we communicate with the Father, the Father communicates through us. And what do we get to do? We get to communicate with other people. Wow. Makes me want to run right out there, stand in the street, start communicating with other people. The next thing we need to do is if we're not, get right, repent of anything you're holding on to. There's, there's this thing called unresolved sin. And unresolved sin is the things that we keep so deep and dark that nobody sees them. Sorry, I got allergies. All sorts of garbage. I don't know what's going on, whatever. I ain't got time for it. We, we have to, we have to let go of everything that we're holding on to. May, you know, it's funny because I did, again, I'm not, I can't go into this. We'll be here forever. The soul trauma thing. And, and a lot of us, we have an idea, but we never let it go in soul trauma. But if we, if we go back and we look at the things and we have an understanding of them and we go, wow, Lord, you can heal me of this. You can repair this. You can bring this back to wholeness. Then we know that there's something that holds something back. And we can bring that forward and repent of it and get healing of it. See? I, that's a, just a whole nother series and stuff, but So repent of anything you're holding on to. Take his side saying, Lord, 
Lead me in your path. Lead me in your path. This is our next series after Thanksgiving, not Thanksgiving Sunday, but the following one is Become Crucified with Christ. And our next series is called to, is, is called to Be the Lamb. And we'll deal with that then. We spoke about the altar, top heaven, being north heaven. That's the top. The altar's the top. The bottom being south, which is earthly places. East is the full resurrection power of Christ given to us through repentance, redemption, and transformation. The east side and the south side is where we want to exit. That's where we want to exit, the south side of the temple. Why, Pastor Mark, do we exit there? Because what is the Great Commission? Go out and proclaim the good news of Christ. Pour the mercy and grace that comes from underneath the door and into you. Then by faith, exit the temple door in humility and bring the good news out. To who? People and the earth. It's great you sitting here in service and collecting all this information. But if you never do anything with it, it's just wasted information. It's wasted information. You know, it's today, it's like, oh, but Pastor Mark, if I say anything, I might get beat up. People might call me names. They beat the stuffing out of Jesus. Called them all sorts of names. Wednesday night, we, we talked about being called names. The great deception in the church is everything's great. Everything's wonderful and lovely. The church is doing fine. Well, no, if you have a church and it's doing fine, you ain't preaching the word of God. Because everybody's just sitting there like this. And then they leave and nothing ever. And then they're not going, oh, my gosh, what the, the pastor, what, what did he just say? How did he know? That's the deception that Satan wants. Oh, everything's good. No, it's not. All sorts of stuff going on. There's people lost and dying. There are people that will die today that probably never heard the word of God. In this country. In this state. Oh, but Pastor Mark, I can't do that. I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. You can. It's your choice. Oh, I don't want people thinking I'm a Jesus freak or a holy roller or any of those things. That's the least of my worries. I'm grateful to fog a mirror in the morning when I get up. Thank you, Jesus. You've seen fit to give me one more day. My task must not be finished. See? Honestly. That's why... Any opportunity we get to flow to people in the world, we need to flow. In the stillness by faith, it is not I but Christ who lives in me shining forth. God's glory shining brightly through humility, revealing the love he has given us so we may give it out. I don't know about you, but I want to be so deep in the river that it's hard to swim. But I know that in the deepness of the river, Christ is holding me up. Because that's, that's what it is. That's what it is. See? In the middle of the river, all, I've got all these things, and I know I've got all these things, and I'm imperfect. But I know Christ is holding me up. It's like... When Peter was asked to get out of the boat, and he got out of the boat, the minute he took his eyes off of Christ, he sank. The Lord's hands was there. And what did he do? He picked him up. He picked him up. Will you allow the Lord today to pick you up in all humility and put you somewhere where you can shine his glory bright? That's what this is all about. I know, you know, uh, I could sit here and tell you how bad you are, how much sin you have. I could beat you to death with the Bible. But you know what? That's not the God I know. 
The God I know wants you to know the depth of his word, and then the depth of his word, you get to make the choice on how you want to live. I will tell you that he loves you. I will tell you that he give, has given you a provision through his son, Jesus Christ. I will tell you that the only way to get to heaven is to repent first. And then I will tell you the only way after that is to receive him as your personal savior. As he moves into you, you move into him. The two become one. It's just like a marriage. And in that... You will be transformed, and you will be sanctified, which means you will be given a plan. But that's a choice you get to make. That's a choice you get to make. I, I made that choice many years ago. And, and you know what? It's just chug-a-lug, 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 toot, toot, you know. Keep chugging going, chugging forward. Every day, learning something new as I go before the throne room of grace, mercy, and love and say, Lord, teach me these things. Take away the spirit of fear. Bring into me a spirit of life. See? Do I screw up every now and then? Oh, yeah. But I love grace. And that grace is poured out abundantly all the time but grace also teaches me not to be stupid again you know but grace also teaches me that I have something that other people need and I'm filling up with it and I need to pour it out let's bow our heads and pray <clears throat> Father God we come before you Lord thank you for this series Lord thank you for allowing us to understand divine stillness Father Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to sit at the throne room of grace, Father, and hear your words as they are spoken. Because, Father, <laughs> we get too caught up in ridiculousness when all we need to do is be focused and still in who you are. Now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I have to do this, it's what I do. Because I want to be able to introduce you to the Lord when the time comes. There's this prayer that I said many years ago, and I pretty much just ran down the, the whole thing a minute ago. And that was this, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me for living the way that the world has taught me to live and act. And Father, I'm asking you today, Father, for, to just forgive me, Lord. I come before you, Lord, and I'm asking you, Jesus, to come into my heart and save me. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. That doesn't mean that you're going to get, if you're a guy, penny loafers, a tie, and a black suit. And ladies, that doesn't mean you need to wear dresses down to your ankles and a big old floppy hat. It's an inward change. It's an inward change. The Lord wants to come in. He wants to enter into you. He wants to enter into your heart. He wants to enter into the temple. As he enters into the temple through, through this, through repentance and then reception, receiving him, he begins a work in you. At the same time, you get to work out your salvation with him. So, Lord, enter into my heart. Basically, save me from me. Father, transform me, which means take away the old and bring in the new and father sanctify me which means reveal your plan to me reveal your plan to me now I would tell you the transformation thing is pretty cool because at that point in time you are no longer who you are were but you are now who he has called you to be now I'm going to tell you if you notice, head every head is still bowed and closed. I have this long goatee. I have long hair. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not GQ, Pastor Mark. The work was inside. The work was inside. And that's what he does. So, Father, I repent of my sins. Forgive me, Father, for living the way that I live. 
Lord, come into my heart and save me. Transform me and sanctify me, Father. Create in me a new creature. Now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if that was your prayer today, right? if that was your prayer today, it's your choice. If that was your prayer today, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want you to lift your hand up real quick and then just put it back down if you prayed that prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we love you. And Lord, we know you have an amazing call for us. And Father, your call is to go and glorify you. Father, we're going to receive so many amazing blessings. I can't wait. I'm getting a Bentley. No, I'm only kidding. No Bentley, Father. Probably a horse and a cart. That's cool. I'll, I'll take that. So, Father, we just, again, humor's good. Humor's good. But, Father, we thank you, Lord. We love you and we praise you, Father. Allow us to chew on this message deeply, intimately, and fully. Father, we love you and praise you. In your precious name we pray, Lord. Amen and amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>